Welcome everyone uh, to my video on how to build an opening repertoire. I think it's a topic which is not discussed very often. You have uh, many books, of course, on chess openings, but they give an opening repertoire. They don't provide you with information on how to build one, which is uh, completely different, of course. So in this video, I want to discuss that topic and show you uh, how to structurally build an opening repertoire. I think the most important thing is to do this very structurally. I'll not get to uh, in any like deep lines or uh, such stuff, but I'll show you how you should be doing this very structurally. And um, if you do this in this way, um, you'll definitely have a nice opening repertoire on which you can rely on. Um, for this video, I thought it would be interesting to go for how to build an opening repertoire with the Night of, but basically the things I'm going to be saying can be used for other openings as well, of course. Um, the Knight of is e4, c5, knight 3, d6, d4, c captures, knight captures, knight f6, knight c3, a6. So this is the starting position of the Knight of. And if you click on online, you go to a database um, and it shows you that in this position, many, many moves have been played before. But I think it's a good idea to know which moves you should be having a look at and which uh, moves you might want to have a look at, but you don't necessarily need to. Um, but I think before you start analyzing the Night Earth, if you're new to Sicilian, you don't always get to this position, of course. Uh, none, none of the white moves have been forced. Um, to Night 3 uh, has not been forced. And here already, if you look at the database again, you can see uh, why there's a lot of options here as well. And basically, if you build an opening repertoire, I would have a look at the most critical lines uh, first before you dive into all the sidelines. Um, and uh, most critical lines, I also mean sidelines, but not the side sidelines, if you understand what I'm saying. with, um, For example, we can see here that Queen H5 has been played 200 times. But if you have a bit of knowledge about chess, you know that such a move cannot really be any good because it develops the queen too early. So queen h5 is a sideline, but it's not one I would have a look at because it just seems really ridiculous at first sight. Um, the sidelines I would have a look at are, for example, um, two knight c3. It's quite the second place played move um, or most played move. Um, c3, um, d4, uh, and basically these lines because these seem like the most logical moves in the position because they contribute to white's development and um, they seem very critical. Um, so those are the sidelines I would cover on move two. Then you, you get to two knight three d6. Um, and what's nice about building, for example, black raptor is that you don't need to have a look at most black sidelines. If you, uh, for example, specifically aim for the knight or variation to have a look at, and you should only have a look at uh, 2d6. Um, so we only need to have a look at white sidelines. In this uh, position, we can see that, for example, bishop b5 is quite commonly played. Uh, so developing moves, so it's quite logical. Um, our moves are c3 again, and knight c3, and bishop c4. So these would be the moves I would cover. These are developing moves, um, and they could be potentially critical as they are developing, which means that maybe white will soon create threats uh, in the position or just get a nice developmental lead. So these are the moves on the third move, which I will cover. Then we get to c takes cap, c takes d4. Here you can basically see that the only other move which is played quite often is queen takes d4. Um, and after we play these few moves, um, we are already close to the knight of. Here, white can also play f3 or bishop d3, which are moves we should be covering. Um, but then we get to the knight of. And as you can see, even before you get to the knight of, there are quite a lot of sidelines. And I will take a look at all of those. Um, there are even more sidelines than this, but these are the most critical ones. So basically, um, what I would do is that I would not make one big file on all of these sidelines. And this is where the structural part basically begins. Okay, okay, we already structurally saw uh, which sidelines we need to cover, 
but we shouldn't be doing this in one file. Uh, what I would do is that, for example, with 2.9c3, I would make a different file um, by saving it, or uh, basically uh, saving a different file into 2.9c3. So uh, you could, for example, make this the main line and then delete all the other side lines and save this. But as we are going to be discussing the night of, we are going to do it the other way around. So I would make a different file on 29C3 and then delete uh, 29C3 from this file. So I would do this with all the sidelines up until you get to the NIDR. Um, and this looks very clean. It's only one, one line until we get to the NIDR. And uh, it's better to have a lot of different files on uh, different openings than one big file in which you cover everything because that will get very messy and you'll not know how to find certain lines that you would like to have a look at again, or it's just going to be very messy. Um, so we get to the night earth after having discussed the sidelines. Of course you need to have a look at those. You can't just stop at 293, for example, uh, but you need to cover those, uh, but in uh, different files. So we get to the night earth and here um, we can see, as I said, that why there's many options. Um, and what I generally do is when I look at a new opening is that I look at the main line and if I like the main line, then I can look at the sidelines. But if I, uh, start looking at sidelines, um, and I like those, which is quite common because there are sidelines for a reason, right? Um, they're in general sidelines because they're not that great. Um, the most played moves are generally the most critical as well. So I would start looking at the main line because if you start looking at the sidelines and you like those, it might be a distorted image of the opening because um, they already they might just not be any good. And you think, okay, I've got a great position here, but that's just because your opponent played something which is uh, not great. Um, but if you don't like the main line, um, you might have lost some hours uh, in which you put into the sidelines. So I'll start with the main line, which you will face the most often. And if you like that, I'll then delve into the sidelines as well. So I'll start, for example, with bishop e3 here. And basically what is important as well for an opening repertoire is that you make decisions on what you play yourself. It's not only um, what your opponent does, but it's also important what you play yourself. So for example, um, we have chosen for this repertoire to have a look at the Nidorf. But um, if you don't like the knife at all, I wouldn't be doing that. But it's hard to say sometimes what openings you like and what not. Uh, basically, you need some basic understanding for for chess to know what opening you like. But it's also about experience. Um, if you uh, have no clue about what opening uh, you like, you can just, for example, play some online blitz games and um, see if you like the certain positions which you get in those uh, games um, and that's all I would generally do because for example in this position after bishop e3 um, black has a, a big choice either e5 which is the most played move or e6 and another line is knight g4 so basically three options in this position and it's quite important because um, e5 leads to a whole different type of position than e6 does they're both still Sicilian tough positions, but um, where your center pawn is, is very important. Um, and uh, this this type of uh, position is called Schevening, and this is more of the typical knight of uh, type of position with the pawn e5 instead of e6. Um, and it basically comes down to your own preference, uh, which move you would like to play here. This is still very early on in the opening. Um, so basically here you can decide at a later stage, you will see that um, you not only can decide what you need to play, but you also need to have a look at if it's actually a good move. Um, here, uh, the different moves are still okay. Um, they're quite oftenly played, which means that probably they will be okay for, for black to play. Um, and um, I would, for example, have a look at e5 first because it's the most oftenly played move. 
Um, you can see night b3 is most played. Uh, night b3 is an other option, but I will cover that in a different file. Um, so we go to night b3. Um, bishop e6 is the most often played. And I, if I were to play the knight of, and I want to choose between playing e5, e6, or knight g4 in the sixth move, I would maybe just have a look at how the main line goes. So f3, bishop e7, queen e2, and these are all just the uh, most played moves. Um, g4, b5, and we can see that basically in the knight of white wants to attack uh, on the king side and black wants to attack on the queen side. So we continue, g5, um, now b4 is often played, 92, 98, f4, and basically it becomes some kind of race. Um, who's faster to the to the enemy king? And if you do not like the these kind of positions, I would already think about um, maybe the knight is not for me. Um, but you can also play it in a different kind of way. Um, for example, if you do not like the variations in which you get made it, you might want to consider, for example, in this position to just go h5. And um, it's only the third move being played, but um, you should always consider not only for your opponent, but also for yourself, the sidelines, because it might just be interesting. And um, at some point you need to start using the engine as well. You cannot f uh, blindly follow the databases. Because for example, um, there was this line which I learned about around five, six years ago when I started to build an opening repertoire for the French. Um, let's start with e6. This is basically the French, I always played knight c3. And uh, I want to build an opening repertoire for the move bishop g5. Another move is e5, but I quite liked uh, bishop g5. Um, and basically it was this variation, the Oyek and Shatar. Um, here black uh, can play uh, kingside castle. And if we have a look into the database, it doesn't score that badly. Uh, castle scores 50, 58%, 59%, which is quite normal for uh, for black. White has a slight advantage in, uh, in, the, in the game of chess, so this is a normal score. And I wouldn't be afraid of casting here because especially if I have a look at the other moves, it does score better than the than a6, bishop takes e5, c5, and h6. So it seems like maybe this is just a great line because it has the best score. But you should, as I already said, not blindly follow the database because uh, what I know from this line is that um, if white goes for mate, actually black, black is just getting mated here. Um, and as you can see in the database, this is still quite uh, played. Uh, and this is actually the main line from this castle variation. Bishop d3 is the most played move, c5 is the most played move, queen h5, g6, queen h6, c6, d4, knight three, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, d3. And we get to this position by just following every uh, most played move from uh, six castles. So we get to this position and this is also why I would have a look at the main lines first. Because if you don't like the main line, uh, I would get rid of the variation. And in this position, um, knight takes g6 used to be played. It still is being played. And uh, very often, this would end in a draw. And if I were black, I would be making an opening repertoire. And I see a draw with black, I would be fine with it. Because um, why is it a tiny bit better in the beginning position? So especially at the top level of chess, they are fine with a draw from the black side. But the thing is that at some point, um, people found out once they use their engines. So let's turn out on our own engine. Um, we can do this by clicking on uh, add kibitzer. Um, and we see that I've already downloaded Stockfish 11. Uh, you can do that for free online um, as well. So if you want to get an engine, just uh, download one. And here, um, once we let it calculate for a bit, um, we can see that um, the evalu evaluation starts to rise. At first it started with um, 0, 0 0.0 because it saw this draw, but now it's already at plus one. And engines used to be worse than they are right now. Um, so people uh, maybe 10 years ago thought this was just a draw because their engine wasn't that great. Um, but it turns out, however, as you can see, um, after King G8, 
rook h3, uh, black is just getting mated. And um, if you have a look into the database, we can see that rook h3 is being played twice in this position, uh, but only after in first game in 2012 and second game in 2016. So um, the people who were just following the data, uh, database um, um, just uh, didn't really look deeply enough into the variations here. And you need to analyze uh, positions yourself as well. If I had this position, I would not only be analyzing queen a6, queen g8, queen g6, because you would be done very, very quickly. Um, but I would be considering other moves as well. Um, and I would uh, have a look at the most logical moves. And as you can see, it's not easy to get any mating threats with the queen in and bishop alone. So I try to get in the rook. And I think, uh, for example, 10 years ago when you had worse engines than you do have right now, if you played rook h3, at some point it would start giving an edge for white as well. Uh, but it might not have found a move uh, on its own. So you need to be careful by, with just blindly following a database. You also need to be careful with blindly following an engine. Uh, as I said, 10 years ago, this move uh, was not found by an engine probably. So even today, I would need not blindly be following an engine, especially if it's not calculating very deeply. Uh, we can see here that it's at depth uh, 27, which is not very deep. Um, and if you just uh, start with a position for the first time on a, or sorry, start with an engine on a position for the first time, you can see that the depth was a bit low. Now it starts at 20, 21. Um, and it goes up the longer you let it sit on this position. Um, so you should not blindly follow the engine, should not blindly follow the database, but these are basically your two friends uh, that you need to use when building opening repertoire. And the most important thing that you should be taking away from this video is that you should be doing this very structurally and cover all the lines that are important. Um, this was my first ever YouTube video. I hope you like it and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more.